Hi, it's Jeff Salzenstein here, the founder of Tennis Evolution. You're in for a treat because in today's lesson, I am going to help you with your serve. What I've done is I've pulled together seven of my best tips on the serve. That's right, seven tips. And if you can't get value out of this lesson, gosh, maybe I'm not the coach for you. Not only are we gonna give you those seven tips, I'm also going to reveal one bonus tip at the end. So you're gonna to wanna to watch the entire video to learn what that bonus tip is. Now, before we get to the lesson, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, make sure that you have your notifications turned on, and hey, share this video if you like it, okay? So let's get to this lesson right now to help you take your serve to the next level. So we're gonna focus on the serve here, and what I want you to take a look at here is when I get ready to serve, obviously I wanna make sure my hand is relaxed. But when I hold the racket again, just like the forehand, I'm going to have this trigger finger spread. Now it's a different grip. We're using a continental grip here. Remember the forehand grip is either Eastern or semi-Western, but with a continental, that's what I'm, the grip I'm going to use with the serve. I see too many players holding the racket. They bring the racket up like this. They have either a forehand grip or a continental grip and they're very tight. And you can see the racket angle here. This is not going to allow you to throw the racket up to the ball as easily. But if you can get that trigger finger spread and you can get that wrist to relax when you start your first move, it's going to feel very nice. So just practice holding the racket in that continental grip with the index finger spread. I'll hit a serve right now. Again, I want you to notice the difference. If I, if I hold in a, a block grip, and I see this with club players, with junior players, if they start like this, if I see the wrist cock like this, I know there's a problem. It's, this is, if I try to relax my wrist, I actually feel tension right here. That is why players aren't doing this. If they have a block grip, it looks like this. You probably have seen players that hold the racket really high because the wrist is cocked. Now, if I spread that trigger finger like this, I can now relax the wrist and, and throw the racket at the ball easier. I can start my first move with a relaxed wrist. So let's assume that you're switching over to a continental grip. Now, let's say you start to swing forward, you're gonna slice around the ball, right? The forehand grip, it's easy to just plop it in like that. The continental grip, if you try, you're gonna slice around the ball. So what does that mean? You, you actually have to change the paradigm. So what paradigm are we gonna change here? What do you notice? I'm not gonna give it away quite yet. What do you notice that I'm doing? What did I change? Well, one, I changed my toss. So I see a lot of players trying to learn how to serve like the pros and their toss is still out to the side. They're used to tossing it here to get it in. So you've got to learn to learn topspin. You have to learn how to toss it more over your head for one. Two, you have to learn a different swing path. You can't go forward anymore. I advise that you create what's called a, a circular swing path, a circular swing path. Circular means if I get a nice turn right here, I'm swinging this way up and over my body like this. And then I want you to notice where I finish. I actually go behind my body. Now I know that is super counterintuitive. Okay, that's, this is not something to try to figure out. You know, I mean, logically it actually makes sense. Physically it makes sense with the physics of it, but it's really hard for people to grasp it. Oh, now I'm going to finish on this side of my body behind me. That's just really strange. I'm so used to swinging towards my target, right? towards my target, I've got to change it. So what I want players to do is finish behind their body. We call this the dirty diaper when you finish to the side like this. So this is, this is the, the main way that I teach topspin or kick is what's called the dirty diaper. Why is it called the dirty diaper? Because it's like you're holding a stinky dirty diaper like this. But to really exaggerate, I'm big on exaggeration. Notice how we went from a forehand grip to continental. Move it to a backhand grip. If you're having a hard time with this, again, you're gonna cut around the ball. You're gonna cut around the ball. So you have to get to a backhand grip and then you have to finish behind your, 
If you can just go out and you can finish behind your body at the end, see what I'm doing? I'm swinging up and over in a circle and then I'm going back here. So right when I make contact, I'm making contact at the right moment right here. I'm swinging up and I'm swinging this way, this way. See this? This way, not this way. So it does so many things. It gets your toss into that topspin position. It teaches you the correct swing path. It is a true statement that if you have a continental grip, then you can pronate. If you have a forehand grip like this, you will not be able to pronate on the serve. Now, we need to talk about pronation in that it's really what we're talking about is really a rotation of the shoulder. Okay, that's another term for pronation. We want to get that shoulder to, to rotate in this fashion to create that pronation effect. So, we do have to have a continental grip. The subscriber who asked the question is absolutely correct. If you have a forehand grip, you have no chance. Now, if you have a solid trophy position, that's going to help as well. But what comes before the trophy position in order to make sure that you can pronate and rotate your shoulder appropriately? You've got to have a proper stance. So I'm assuming if someone says, hey, I've got a great trophy position, they have a solid stance. Because if your foot is lined up in this fashion like this, directly, your back foot, directly behind the front foot, it's going to be harder to get that turn and when you make contact, your body might be facing the net more like this. And if you're facing the net like this, it's going to be difficult to pronate or to rotate that shoulder. So it's very important that you have a correct stance, a stance where this foot slides back in this direction, because this will allow you to turn and get into that wonderful trophy position. If you have a pinpoint stance, and if you bring the foot up to the side like this, it's going to be harder to pronate. I'm not saying you can't do it, but what I'm saying is that the more that you bring this foot up to the side, the more you'll be facing the net at contact, and again, that can make it more difficult to pronate. It is true. If you have a great trophy position, if you can get your elbow in the correct position, I'm going to turn around like this. If you can get your elbow into this position right here at some place at the trophy, you have a better chance of being able to pronate. It's not going to guarantee it, but it gives you a better chance. What about your ball position? I see this over and over again with players that when they serve, their toss is too far to the side. So if they're out to the side, it's going to be more difficult to pronate. More of a slice serve toss. So it is going to help to get the toss location at least above your dominant shoulder like this. Maybe even towards your head to help you learn this concept. The more that your arm it moves out to the side and makes contact out here, the more difficult it is for you to pronate. So ball position and ball toss matters. Instead of tossing it out here, you can't really pronate from that position. You're going to have to practice getting that ball toss up above the head more, or above the shoulder at least. Okay, so ball position is very important. Now, I want to talk about what's called the side bend. So when you make contact, if you are a collapser like this, again, we're trying to replace that movement with something else. So instead of collapsing at contact, we're gonna focus on a side bend at contact. Now, one of the tests that we do at Racket Fit is uh, with a body serve connection is we focus on can somebody side bend. And a lot of people are restricted in here. So you have to be able to, your body has to be able to do it. So when you make contact, look at how I'm side bending at contact. That's very different than hinging at the waist and bending over at contact. So what I think about doing is when I make contact, I am side bending into the ball. And when I side bend, that keeps me more sideways at contact. So you'll see right here, I'm side bending at contact. And so when I finish, I'm in this position. Recently, I made a video that talked about having a more extreme stance, if you will. In the video, I talked about having a stance, I'm just gonna move over here for a moment, where you have your front foot parallel to the baseline 
and you turn out your back foot like this. So you're in a platform stance and you turn out. And so that's a stance, a platform stance that, that models uh, Pete Sampras, arguably one of the greatest servers of all time. And the reason that we were talking about doing this stance is that not only does it give you more disguise, but it really helps you coil and turn. If you're having trouble coiling and turning like this, turning your back foot out will help a lot. And that is a great tip if you want more topspin and if you want more kick. But you know what? There's always pluses and minuses, pros and cons to certain stances and certain ways of, of serving. And so I want to present another argument against that stance because the comment or the question that came to me is, hey, if I do that, should I also do it on this side of the court? So as a lefty, I'm on the ad court right now. As a righty, I would be on the deuce court. Should I have this stance, this extreme stance? And I'm gonna say in most cases, no. So that means that your stance might vary from side to side, from deuce court to ad court. And this is why I say no. If you get into this extreme stance on this side of the court, you really might struggle hitting a wide slice serve, getting slice on your serve. So this stance is really set up to hit more topspin and more kick. So what I would advise you to do, most of you out there are not gonna be able to do it. Heck, I struggle with it. When I was changing my serve at 28 years old, right before I broke the top 100 in the world, I had a platform stance. I brought my foot up. I switched to the platform to model Sampras, but when I tried to get as extreme as Sampras, my wide size serve suffered. So I had to find a stance that was a little more moderate, not as extreme. So my advice to you is I would actually point this front foot a little bit more in the ad court as a lefty and the deuce court as a righty. And I would make sure this foot is more parallel. Now you can still turn, you can still have a great turn, but it's just not as extreme. And so what this is gonna allow you to do is hit great slice serve. So I come up to the line and I start pointing this foot and I'm not bringing this foot back and I'm not turning it out as much. So you'll see if I point it like this, now I can hit great wide slice serves, okay? And so I can really focus, now my front foot is pointed and this foot is more parallel. And I can hit the slice. If I were to turn more like I, like I was in the other court in that other video, if I was to be more turned, it's just harder for me to get my body to rotate and to have as much slice. Most of you out there are gonna actually hurt your opponents if you have a better slice serve than kick serve. The slice skids, it stays low, you can go into the body. The kick serve, you have to actually hit it perfect for it to work. If it sits up, you're in trouble. So I really like players focusing on developing a nasty slice serve when they're playing because we want to avoid that serve uh, sitting up if you go with the kicker. So this more extreme stance is great for disguise, but I'm not getting a lot of slice there. I turn my feet a little bit, and even though I miss that well wide, you can see I have so much more slice on the serve. So what I see players doing when they're learning to serve, they want to move their back foot. So when they toss the ball, they move their back foot up right away. I see this move uh, very often. And it's very inefficient. It's not a great way to serve. Some great servers have figured out how to do it and how to make it work for them. But when you're learning how to serve, or if you wanna make your serve more efficient, I believe that you should work on loading your back leg better. And you should either use a platform or a pinpoint stance where <clears throat> you toss the ball and you load into your back leg like this before you jump off of both feet. You still are going to have weight on the front foot, but it's going to be more evenly distributed. If you move your back foot up like this, you still should be pushing off of your back foot. A lot of players just slide this foot up because they don't want to put any weight on their back leg. It's not that they don't want to, is they don't know how or their body doesn't like it. A lot of players struggle loading this back leg. So we want to break this habit of, of 
shifting to the front foot too early and bringing this foot up to the side. Coco Goff, other servers, they like to move their foot up to the side like this. This is going to inhibit your shoulder turn and your coil and your ability to even disguise the serve the way that you want. So what you can do is you can put down a solid object like a brick or in this case a sandbag. So if you want to keep from moving the foot, you need to prop like this. If you find that you're having a hard time and you keep moving this back leg, if you can just set your stance where you want it to be, <clears throat> it's very simple, right? You just set your stance where you want it to be and you're going to notice if you're going to want to move this foot, you're going to start kicking it. So what you want to do is get in your comfortable stance. So for me, this is a comfortable stance. So I'm going to do everything in my power not to move this foot. Okay. If I, if I want to move the foot, if I'm tempted to move the foot, I'm going to want to pick it up, but I'm going to run right into the sandbag. Today we are going to talk about the pelvis or the hips and what people are not doing and what they should be doing if they want to develop a professional looking serve, a serve that is elite and they can keep improving. And so the biggest thing that I see with players trying to use their pelvis is that when they choose to bend their knees, they essentially squat. There's a lot of squatting and the butt is sticking out like this. When that happens, it creates an extra curve in the spine. We call this an S posture, so the curve is in the low back, and you don't want that when you serve. Now, this is very different than going to the gym. Imagine going to the gym and squatting and shooting your hips back like this. That is not how you serve. So the squat in tennis is very, in a, in a tennis serve is very different than a squat in the gym. You want to be squatting like this. Notice how my pelvis or my my pelvis is in a neutral position here as I bend my knees and go down. If I were squatting in a gym, I'd stick my butt back and sit back like this. Very different, right? It's almost like I'm sliding down a wall with a neutral spine like this. That's what you want to practice doing when you bend your knees on the serve. So when you prepare to serve, a lot of you out there when you go to serve, you're bending your knees and then you're sticking your butt out. What you want to practice doing is tucking the tail. I call it tucking the tail. So you have a tail here and you're tucking the tail underneath like this. Another way to look at it is pretend that your pelvis is a water bucket. A bucket, I should say, with water in it. And if you stick your butt back like this, now the bucket is tilted this way and the water is spilling out forward. But if you bring the bucket back to neutral like this, now the water is not going to spill out. Now, final tip I want to give you today before you go. And this one doesn't always solve what happens at contact, but it can help you be aware of your posture when you finish your serve. And I call it hop three times. So when you serve and you land, if you can hop three times with great posture. So when you land, you can hop three times. See how tall I am when I land? Yes, you may be collapsed at contact, but then you can come right back up and stand up straight. So if you got a lot of value out of this lesson, make sure you smash the like button. I hope you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not, make sure you subscribe. Turn on those notifications so you can be updated on future lessons. And hey, thanks for your time today. Before you go, click the link below or somewhere in this video. We're going to give you a free serve training we're actually going to share with you three amateur serve mistakes you could be making. I want you to avoid these mistakes. We're going to give you the solutions. We're going to help you take your game to the next level. So go ahead and click in the description below. There's a link there somewhere in this video. We'll see you at the next one.